Um, well, Ruth, you've asked me to take you to the place where we found the first archaeological evidence of the Presidio of San Francisco. And um, I and some of my colleagues have been monitoring had been monitoring construction in this area, the backyards of these houses, for several months, and we had started finding some bits of pottery, but we didn't really know what to make of it. And then um, I was sent out to monitor the removal of some underground fuel oil tanks that used to that used to provide fuel for the furnaces and the cellars of these buildings. And my job was basically after the tank was removed to go and inspect the hole that each tank had left write a short report on what I'd seen and if there was anything archaeological to call Vance Bente, who was my boss at the time. And um, there were oil tanks behind each of these houses that were being removed. Um, the only one that we found anything archaeological in is the one behind this building, building 12, because someone had installed a gas line on top of the oil tank and in order to remove the oil tank they had to widen the hole and turn the gas tank, upend it, and pull it out in a really unconventional way. And in the process, they exposed and disturbed part of a stone wall foundation and deposits that had little bits of clay tile and mahalika ceramic and other Spanish colonial artifacts. And I was a very, um, I was very early in my career. I had a bachelor's degree, I had only a couple years of professional experience. And so I wasn't exactly sure what I was seeing, but I had seen enough soil in this area to know that what I was seeing didn't belong there naturally. And it looked a bit like some kind of wall type thing, but I didn't really, and, I, and the artifacts belong to the Spanish colonial period. None of us can exactly remember exactly who showed up at what time when, but we know that eventually all four of us were here in one way or another, and um, by that time I was really tired and muddy because the pit was about six feet deep and it was about waist deep full of this mixture of rainwater. I was drenched, I was absolutely drenched. and. Um, you know, by the end of the day, we had a sense that we had found something that was certainly Spanish colonial, but we didn't really know what it was because the quadrangle was supposed to be over to the um, southwest. That initiated a whole series of investigations um, sponsored by the Army Corps that Vance led and that I was on the team of, where we started slowly tracing out the wall foundations we found here into other backyards and eventually into other parts of the quadrangle and led to the definition of the quadrangle itself eventually. We now think that the quadrangle was built, this, this was an expanded quadrangle that was built sometime around 1815. At the time we had no idea. We thought that this might just be an outbuilding um, that had been built as part of, you know, an outbuilding from the original Presidio quadrangle or something like that. Um, it wasn't until really 1999 that um, there were two things that happened. One was the publication of a translated memoir by someone who described a, a big construction project at the Presidio in 1815 but also a couple houses up, Amy Ramsey and I were doing an excavation, um, just a couple building, a couple backyards up, where we found that the foundations that run through these backyards actually lie on top of an earlier trash deposit that has artifacts dating up into the early 1810s, but nothing later than that. Mm. And so the combination of the documentary evidence and then the artifactual evidence helped us really hone in and identify this large build as something that happened around 1815.